Now, there are alternative methods to binomial expansion other than using the Pascal's triangle because when we use really big exponents to make a triangle that you know goes up to let's say 10 or more degrees it gets actually quite exhausting and time consuming so it's not always the most convenient way to do that so instead of using Pascal's triangle we could also use the combinations sequence to determine the coefficients of the terms and what I want to stress here is that it is a way to find the coefficients, not a way to find all of the terms, right? Which is which would be the number in front of the variable. So when I look at the uh, combinations, right, n choose r, well, the n would represent the degree of a, or the highest degree of the equation, right, or the binomial. And then the r would represent the degree of b, or the degree of the second variable in the binomial. Because remember that as a decreases, then the second variable in the binomial increases. So let's say we're asked to write the first three terms in the expansion of a plus b to the 15. Now, Imagine trying to make a Pascal triangle with uh, up to 16 rows if we start from zero. That is going to take a really long time, especially if we're going to apply all the rules and logistics within the triangle. So what we can do is we know that we want to write the first three terms, and each of the three terms are going to have A and B stuck together. So what we're going to do is we're going to write A, and let me use a bit of a smaller font here so we can see it better. So A, B, and since it's plus, we know that we're going to have pluses in between them, plus a, b, plus a, b. And then between each one, we're going to have n, c, r, n, c, r, n, c, r. And this n, c, r over here is going to help us determine the coefficient that should be in front of A and B. Now, when I expand each of these, the n, or the degree of the binomial, is always going to be the same because it's of the 15th degree. So we're going to go 15, and then the r value here is going to be whatever the degree of B is at that time, which in this case will be choose 0. And then we're going to write A, B, and then plus 15 choose 1. And then we're going to write A, B. And then plus, we're going to write 15 choose 2, A and B. Plugging these into the calculator, I get 1AB plus 15AB plus 105AB. And then finally, what I'm going to do in blue over here is put the proper um, degrees on both the A and B variables. So remember that we start off with A being max at 15 and then your B being uh, the lowest at 0 and then as A decreases B increases. So this would be 1 A A B 0. The next one is 15 A 14 and then 1 and then 105A13, I'll try to write that a little bit better, and then B2. And then this would be the first three terms of the expanded polynomial. But you could just write even this part here. It could be written just as A to the 15 because B to the 0 is just 1. So A to the 15 uh, fif plus 15A to the 14B1 plus 105a to the 13b2. So for this one, we want to write, once again, the first three terms in the expansion of x minus 3y to the exponent 12. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the uh, subtraction because the subtraction um, makes the expansion a little different. Uh, what we do is, when there's a subtraction sign between a and b, we alternate... Um, the sign between the binomials, starting with the negative, of course. So 
Um, or I should say not binomials, but, but terms. Sorry, so let's just erase this here and put terms. So, how does that look like? Once again, we're not going to use the Pascal's triangle because it takes too long. So I set up the three terms, AB minus uh, AB, and then plus AB. And here's the alternating part that we're talking about. So this is the alternation. And then if we were to, um, let's say, go for the fourth term, then we would write minus NCR AB once again. But of course, we just want the, um, the first three terms. So now with the alternating terms here, we're going to use the combination to get the formula. So 12 choose 0 AB minus 12 choose 1 AB plus 12 choose 2 AB. And then, of course, we're going to actually put those combinations into the calculator to get the coefficients. That gives us coefficients of 1 minus 12 and 66. And now, finally, we're going to plug in the A and the B, respectively. Um, but before that, I'm going to put the appropriate um, exponents on each. So A starts at 12, B starts at 0, then A goes to 11, B starts at 1, A goes to 10, and then B goes to 2. And then now we're going to substitute the X in for A and the 3Y in for B. So that expands to the following, and what I'm going to do here is simplify by applying the exponent outside the brackets to everything inside the bracket. And so that leaves me with the following. Now that I've almost got this expanded, I'm going to multiply any of the coefficients together to further conjoin the terms. And this finally leaves us off with x to the 12 minus 36 x 11 y plus 594x to the 10 y squared. Now let's say we want to find a specific term in the expansion of any binomial. We can also use the following formula, and in this case when we want you to find a specific term in a very large set, this is the formula you're going to want to jump to. So that's t at k plus 1. Now this k plus 1 formula over here, this refers to the term number. Okay, so the number or the term number that um, we're, we're referring to. Sometimes you'll see it quoted n. So what you could say is that n equals k plus 1 is equal to n choose k. So whatever value plus 1 that gives us the n value, that's the k value. And this over here, like in the previous uh, questions, this here is going to give us the constant. And then finally, this is like your A, the X, and the Y would be like your B. So we want to find the eighth term in the expansion of X plus Y to the 14. Well, first, let's get the K, because we see that it shows up twice in this formula here. Now, if N is equal to K plus Y, right, and we want to find the eighth term, okay, then that means that if it's 8 is equal to k plus 1, and we subtract both sides by 1 here, that is going to be 7 is equal to k. Now, that allows us the k value, but remember, this n over here isn't the total number of terms, okay? It's not the total. It's just the term that we're looking for. The total number of terms is going to be, uh, I mean, in this case, we have to the 14th degree. So we're going to go like this. T8 is equal to 14. So this is actually our n value. And we figured out that k is 7. So 14, choose 7. And then multiplied by x. And remember that this is just going to be the constant. Multiply x and then n minus k. Well, the n value is 14 and the k is 7. So 14 minus 7, y to the 7. When we plug this in, t8, 14 to 7 gives us a value of 3,432. 
and then x to the 7, y to the 7. And since it's just asking for what the eighth term would be, this is the full eighth term expansion. So in this question, we're asked to find the middle term in the expansion of 2x minus 5 to the 6. Okay, so one thing I'm going to point out here is, remember, since we start from 0, if there are 6 terms, or I should say a degree of 6, that means that there are 7 terms in total. And why is that the case? Um, well, think about it. If we're counting from 0, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Um, that is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? That's 7 terms in total. So when we ask, okay, for a, uh, for a middle term, we actually want the number that is right down the middle. And we would actually start numbering the terms from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when we look at this here, this is the middle term. Now why is that significant? Because if t is 4, um, then, and we know that n is equal to k plus 1, that means that 4 is equal to k plus 1, 4 minus 1 is equal to k, which means that k is 3, then we know what we can plug into our final formula here. And so that'll leave that t4 is equal to 6 choose 3 multiplied by x n minus k y k. And this time when we sub in the values, it'll be 6 choose 3. The x is actually, if this is x and the 5 is y, then we're going to 6 choose 3 bracket 2 x to the and it's going to be 6 minus 3 and then multiplied by it'd be negative 5 to the 3. This then expands to 6 choose 3 is equal to 20 and then 2x to the 6 minus 3 is equal to 8x cubed and then negative 5 to the 3 is negative 125 and so when we multiply this all together all these terms here then we ended up with about negative 20,000 x cubed. And that is the middle term um, of this.